Okay, um, so this is the front of assignment four that we did the day afterwards. So this is just the front. It's a bunch of graphs. Um, you should have work and labels like I was instructing. So um, I'll just go ahead and go through these. So the answers are online for you to check against. Um, graph one period, indicate max min, asymptotes uh, for the max mins, I guess. I don't know. It's not really asymptotes on these. Um, zero to two pi, 360 radians and degrees. So first step, we're going to graph this. We're going to graph one period worth, two pi, 360 degrees, cut in half, cut the, cut the halves in half. Go negative one to one, label your axes, arrows, X and Y. Okay, so the two divides the period by two. So just show that work, divide by two, done. Okay, the regular sine curves go zero to one to zero to negative one to zero, light dash line. Okay, the three multiplies all the values by three. So it's gonna go up to positive three and negative three. And so we're going to make it dark. Should be a nice smooth curve. It's solid. <laughs> okay. And we're going to label the max and min. Here's the min. Here's the max. And it's very clear. So that's what we're doing on each of these. Okay. Next curve. X, Y, one negative one so we're starting all these graphs like pretty much the same mark the period off two pi 360 degrees cut it in half cut it in half cut it in half now the cosine curve starts at one and goes to zero and goes to negative one goes to zero and goes to positive one the two multiplies it all those values by two now you could do the negative two at the same time now i should have drawn a nice light version now the negative, you could have applied with the two, multiplies all the y values by negative, which means this positive becomes a negative and this negative becomes a positive. It flips it upside down is the result. So that's our final graph, one period of worth. Make it nice and solid. Okay, indicate the max, indicate the min with a light line. Just make it super clear. So that's what we're doing. Okay, next one is all right, one, negative one. Now I'm making these a little smaller because I see this four right here. So sometimes it might be good to kind of anticipate what you need. Two pi, 360 degrees, cut in half, cut the halves in half. Um, no change in the period. So then we sketch the sine curve, starts at zero, one, zero, negative one, zero light dash line um, the four is the next thing you should do order of operations if you do the minus one it's not going to work very well so the four multiplies everything by four the zero stays zero that's uh, so the next one the minus one moves everything down one unit so down to negative five so this is gonna go here, this is gonna go down one, this is gonna go down one, and this is gonna go down one, this is gonna go down one, and this is the new curve. Okay, and so there's the max at three, the min is at negative five. There you go, one period's worth. Okay, next one. Uh, draw the graph. Label the axes, put little arrows, mark the period, 2 pi, 360 in general, cut in half, cut the halves in half, sine goes from 0 to 1 to 0 to negative 1 to 0, light dash line. Now that's the parent function. Now the 3 inside divides the period by 3. So now it's 120 degrees or 2 pi over 3 radians. The negative two, we could we could do both of those at the same time. It means this goes down here, this goes up here, and that's the new graph. And then plus one moves everything up one, right? 
So it's going to go up to three now. This is going to go up one. This is going to go up one. This is going to go up one. And this is going to go up one. So it's going to look like that. There you go. Let's mark the max and mins off. There we go. Okay. Uh, next one. Now, the next one, I'm anticipating that reflection, that horizontal reflection. But you know what? I'm okay with if we don't go all the way. Okay. So 2 pi, 360, 1, negative 1, cut in half, cut in half, cut in half. Sine goes 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, light dash line. So that's the parent function. Now the 2 divides the period by 2. So you get 180 degrees, you get pi radians. The negative flips it over here. So now that's going to go here. This can go here. It's going to, go, it's going to look like this. Now I want it. I want the final graph near. So we just keep it going because that's what sine and cosine curves do. Is they just they just continuous waves. And this is our graph. And there's the max. And there's the min. There we go. Okay, number six, uh, we're going to have a similar issue with that negative on the inside. I think, you know, we don't have to fully reflect it to get the effect of it and get the final answer where we want. <clears throat> Mark the period off, 2 pi, 360 degrees, cut in half, cut in half, cut in half. Uh, cosine curve starts at 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. Those are the only dots I want, but I also need them. My dash line. Now the 3 divides the period by 3, right? The negative flips it over here. Well, that goes to here. This goes to here. And guess what? If you continue it back in, looks exactly like the original curve. Oh, I shouldn't be darkening it yet because then we got to do the plus 1. Shouldn't have been darkening it. So this gets up to here. This goes to here. This goes to here. This goes to here. This goes to here. This is the final graph. <clears throat> Four of operations inside out. So here's the max, and the min is at zero. Okay. If this was an inequality, that would bounce off the graph, right? That's that plus one adjustment that forces those valleys to bounce off the graph. Okay, next one. X, Y, one, negative one. Mark off the period, two pi, 360 degrees. Cut in half, cut in half, cut in half. Sine curve starts at zero, one, zero, negative one, zero. Light dash line. Now, the negative on the inside flips it. So this ends up over here, this ends up over here, and this is the graph you get. And if we continue it on it through, this is what it looks like. The negative 2 on the inside flips it upside down and multiplies it by 2, right? So this down here and this right here, this ends up up here, this ends up down here. So this is the new graph. It's back to looking right side up. And then the plus 1 moves everything up one unit. So I need these dots, and then we're going to, that's our final answer, so we're going to darken it in. But I think if you tried to figure this graph out all at once, you'd screw it up. But by doing it one step at a time, it's easy. I mean, let's mark the maximum in. I want to know that you know where the bottom and tops of your waves are supposed to be. Okay. All right, um, next one has some absolute values, which will be the last thing we do because they're outside of everything, right? My absolute values sometimes look a little short, but those are all absolute values on these problems. Okay, so we're going to start with, now this one's kind of interesting. This is going to give you, absolute values result in some weird looking graphs because they fold part of a graph over a lot of times. So 2 pi, 360 degrees, amplitude, negative 1 to 1, sine curve, a cut in half, cut in half, cut in half. Sine goes 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Dash line. Okay. 
The three on the inside divides the period, okay? The two multiplies everything by two. Okay, new light dash line. The plus, the minus one moves everything down one. So this goes down one, 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 and so this is the new graph. Okay, now the absolute value forces anything that's negative to be positive. So what I would do is I'd flip the dots. Negative one dot becomes positive one. Negative one dot becomes positive one. Negative three dot becomes positive three, way up here. And negative one dot becomes positive one. So this part of the curve is like that. Okay, and then this original part of the positive curve stayed positive, so you could darken that in. But what happens is, now I want you to get the shape of this right, is this concave kind of down curve becomes concave up, and you get this kind of thing, really sharp corner. Same thing here. It should be concave up. I don't want to see this. I want to see this at this area right here. This is, I don't want to see that. I want to see that. I want you to get that curve right, but that that's it. That's one period where that's what that graph looks like. Okay, next one. But hopefully you're finding, you know, if you get the hang of this, this is gonna help you on any kind of shape graph. This one step at a time transformation inside out. Now the two, now the cosine cut in half, cut in half, cut in half, cosine starts at one, zero, negative one, zero, one. So light dash line looks like that. The two divides the period by two. So we get pi radians and 180 degrees. I want both radians and degrees. The absolute value forces this negative part to get flipped up. So I want that dot. So now it's like this. And then the negative flips everything upside down. So now it's like this. And then the 2 is like a plus 2. That's a positive 2, not minus 2. The negative is being applied to this. Multiplying it. <clears throat> 2 moves everything up 2. So it's this part of the graph down here, <clears throat> which gets moved up to here. And this is this is what the graph looks like. Okay? But... That's two periods worth. I only want one period, right? If the pattern repeats itself, then you've done more than a period. So final answer, just this part. Don't include that in your final answer. I should see it in your work, but just that right there. Now, this is the max, this is the min. You got your period labeled, there you go. All right, last one. All right, that's all the first steps are the same for any of these graphs. Amplitude, period, cut in half, cut in half, cut in half. Now the sign, this is where it starts to depart. Sign looks like this. This is called the parent function. Okay. Now this is interesting because what does the three, the three will divide the period by three. And then you might think anything add or subtracting inside affects it left or right. And in fact, if it's minus it, it moves it to the right pi. But it's not just pi, actually. Be careful. You have to uh, factor that 3 out. And the shift is actually pi over 3, not pi. So you got to factor any coefficients out that are in front of the x. So we're going to move this graph to the right. Th pi over 3. Now this is 2 pi over 3, right? So this is pi over 3 now. So this ends up here. This ends up here. This ends up here. This ends up here. Like this is the new graph. It, it works out pretty nice this time, okay? we got a period change. Now remember, I kind of would like our graph to start back at 0. So it's interesting that this horizontal shift actually results in something that looks like the original graph flipped upside down. Well, that's just another identity. Now, the negative 2 in front flips, multiplies all the y values by negative 2. So this this point down here ends up up here. This point uh, up here ends up down here. And this is the new graph of one period. I took the shift. I shifted it, but then I continued it back to 0. 
the absolute values force the negative part to become positive. This negative two ends up at positive two. And then the negative one moves everything down one. So this goes down one, 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 and it looks like that. But that's two periods, so I just want one period. There you go, one period, max, min, there you go. So that's how I want you guys to do graphs on your next test to get full credit. That's how I want you to do them on assignments. And if you practice this right now, even if you think it's unnecessary, it's going to pay off on all kinds of different graphs. Technically, the period, by the way, is this now, pi over 3 or 60 degrees, right? And the last problem, the, the period is now 90 degrees pi over 2. Okay. So that's how we do it.